very much, uh, Brian, and, and thank you for you for uh, for being here in this uh, nice nice day. You know, it's a very busy period of the year, and, and sure, we tell you something about Jane Jacobs, share some of my thoughts, but really hope that we can also have a conversation, uh, uh, maybe uh, after, and um, in a way, I, I'm having, uh, I, I, I had a conversation with this book for maybe 30 years uh, now, and I keep it having it, I, I read it from uh, front to back, I think, uh, for the first time to, to prepare this, and I keep discovering new things. So I really hope to give you a bit of that, uh, that feeling and to, to, to enter in some conversation uh, with you. I'm not, uh, as Brian said, I'm not, uh, I'm not a Jane Jacobs scholar, I'm an urban scholar, but I was indeed much influenced by, by her work. Actually reading uh, this book, uh, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, one of the factors who made uh, me uh, do a, a major career switch from architecture and design as a way of knowing and, 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 and engaging in cities to planning and the social sciences as a way of knowing and engaging uh, with, uh, with cities. The, the book uh, has been published in 1961, so it's more than uh, 50 years, <coughs> but I, I think it's still, and it was confirmed when I read it again, uh, you know, one of the best books ever written on cities and on, on, on planning, and, and still very fresh in many ways and I also do every now and then in this in this talk is to make some links with, with current developments. Again just just this a small exploration to see uh, you know what how you also how you react to that and then maybe you can pick up some of that later or maybe you come up with your own uh, ideas about that. But you know when I'm talking about conversations uh, I mean uh, that so I want to before I start uh, uh, discussing uh, the book, uh, I want to do a little warming up uh, with you. So uh, please uh, take your uh, your uh, phones, laptops, whatever if you have that. Uh, go to this uh, site, and then uh, there uh, you uh, get uh, the opportunity to uh, ditch in that code. And uh, there you will be able to answer these questions with uh, a keyword, uh, or maybe try use one, or be a combination, but one, two words. I think you can do it three times. And just, you know, very spontaneous, first things that come to your mind, just say what are, according to you, the most distinctive qualities of cities as a social phenomenon. So social phenomenon is crucial, so I'm not talking about See this as, as a physical phenomenon, so, uh, not about buildings or, or infrastructure, is see this as a social phenomenon. What are uh, keywords, uh, combination of words, but again, be uh, succinct, that come up to your mind. And okay, one person has already succeeded in, uh, in, uh, in uh, finding how this works, and others are. Uh, are emerging. Let's see what what happens if a few people do this. But I didn't plan this. It's an emerging process, but it's very it's converging a lot. Of course, there are a lot of words that will be really interesting to explore further. Maybe we should in the conversation uh, in a while. But you see there, anyway, there's this big diversity in the middle, but also around it, vibrant mass, uh, excitement, mobility, and, 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 and other things. OK, these are some of the key qualities of city. Let, let's <coughs> assume these are really you know, qualities worth more cultivated, that have an important uh, uh, function in, uh, in uh, not just the life of city, but of, of people in cities. And I will get back on that. But think, now take these qualities, and, and also the hierarchy there, diversity there, big in the middle, and, and, and some others. And let's move to the, to the second uh, question. Uh, again, uh, the question here is, okay, th those are the qualities, okay? These are the distinctive qualities of cities as a social phenomenon. What can planning do 
uh, if anything, to enhance these, these qualities. Again, just throw out words that come up to your mind. And here we are going into the physical, but as, as a way of enhancing those social qualities. I think the code might have become another one. I'm not uh, sure. I'm still using the free version, so I cannot have to shift to different pages. Uh, Organized. Yeah, people are. Uh, okay. I mean, I can see your social sciences, a lot of, uh, of uh, processes in there. Actions. Not much physical stuff. We might discuss about that later. Maybe cities can exist without building or infrastructure. Okay. Now here you see also a, a nice, nice combination uh, of words. I mean, I will mean, share. This, uh, this, these clouds uh, with you and you want. But let's go to the third and last question, because of course planning can enhance this quality, but can also disrupt these qualities, even destroy them. So here the question is, maybe uh, uh, you know, challenge yourself, not just to say the opposite, but or maybe you know, do that, if that's, that's your point. But you know, what can you do to disrupt these qualities, or maybe even destroy them. What are some some words that come up to your uh, mind? And you need to see the code keep shifting, so you need to put it in again. Because there are some words popping up, but you know, also the, 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 the words that don't pop out, and somehow it's just maybe they are just written in just a different way. We, I mean, are also worth reflecting about. But the reason, okay, so here you, you see also some clear patterns. And the reason I'm doing this, of course, we could, you know, work on this. Welcome to you as well, by the way. Please <laughs> don't. Uh, don't uh, feel you have to uh, leave. But I, 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 I'm doing this because, in fact, in a nutshell, this is the project of, of the book. Uh, the project of the book is pinning down what are these, uh, you know, these, these distinctive uh, qualities of cities, you know, to explore also why are they so important, and then asking what can planning do or, or actually is doing to uh, to uh, especially destroy them or frustrate them, disrupt them in the context where Jane Jacob was operating the New York of the 50s, but also what can planning do to, to enhance this way. So in, in a nutshell, this is the project of the book. Of course, there are all sort of layers, and that's what I will try to, to give you in. I will not, cannot go in all of them, but I, you know, I will read some pieces here and there, uh, 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 you know, wander a bit around to try and, and make you curious about reading the book, uh, not just one chapter or a few pages if you're not done it, or reread it again if, uh, if uh, you have already. I think it's a book that everyone uh, you should uh, 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 read. So thank you for this, uh, for this start, and, uh, and, and yeah, we can pick up some of this uh, later in, uh, in the discussion, but first let's, uh, let's make this journey 
uh, around uh, around this book. So the book is organized as it's, you know it's more than 400 pages. It's, it's quite uh, quite extensive, uh, very rich of detail. Uh, it's a nice combination of very very visual uh, descriptions of what you might see in cities and also some deep reflections. A lot of also exploration in you know in the realms of institutions underlying what you might see. Uh, and so for it, it has four parts. And the parts go through those steps that we have explored also in the, in, in the work club. So the first part is about, okay, what are these, these distinctive characteristics of cities uh, relative to, to other human settlements, to towns, uh, uh, suburbs, uh, the countryside. And then, uh, as we'll see, with, with, with diversity emerging indeed as a very uh, crucial one, what are conditions, you know, that uh, uh, you know, and uh, underlie that, uh, that that make that uh, uh, possible. Now, in the first, uh, the third uh, uh, part, the focus more on the processes, both uh, you know of, of decline and regeneration, both enhancing that diversity or, or frustrating that. And the fourth is about uh, after quite a quite a few very critical parts, some ideas of how how, how to do better, even in in, in a rather uh, technical, technical way. I will go through these parts, uh, give you some 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 impressions of uh, um, you know of what, what's in there, reading little bit pieces here and there, and also exploring some possible links uh, to development in our present uh, context. So let's start now with uh, with the first, and the first uh, is really zooming in on you know how we see. What we see in cities, and, uh, and uh, many were caught a bit by surprise, but this starting, you know, book on cities with sidewalks, but that's that's where it starts. Actually, I will say a little bit later a bit of, of Jane Jacobs as an activist. One of her first battle was a battle uh, 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 against the narrowing of, of, of the sidewalks in her own street. So you say, well, what a what a trivial battle to to engage, but for her was. An, an existential battle in many ways, and uh, and in, in, you know reading this uh, this chapter, the first, the two, th th uh, second, third, and fourth chapter would make you uh, understand it. How how side sidewalks, the kind of uh, the human interactions, the way they are used, uh, um, the different uh, people using it, are key to some basic uh, basic social functions uh, like enabling. Uh, safety, um, uh, uh, helping build uh, social capital, uh, uh, creating conditions for the development of children. And because these three are so crucial, uh, both in, in what described but also what it makes possible, I will, I will say something about all three. And the fifth and sixth chapter move us, zoom a bit out to the to neighborhoods. Uh, and uh, and parks in, in in a more in a more uh, in, uh, at higher scale. Uh, so let's start with this this very basic function of of enabling uh, safety, and that's what uh, what uh, 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 how sidewalks and the dynamics in sidewalks ensures that. So that's that's what she writes. Under the seeming disorder of the old city. Wherever the old city is working successfully is a marvelous order for maintaining the safety of the streets and the freedom of the city. It is a complex order. Its essence is intricacy of sidewalk use, bringing with it a constant succession of eyes. And to be clear, these are human eyes we are talking about. So they are not the mechanical eyes by which we are flooding uh, uh, cities now they have uh, seemingly the same, uh, the same, uh, the same uh, objective. Now these are human eyes uh, uh, looking into each other, coming across each other in the everyday use of the street. And that everyday use, in, uh, at the beginning of a quite a famous passage, see, compares to a, to a form of art, rather an art which is you know imposed from above. Of, Choreographed from outside, but kind of emerges in the in the interactions and uses of streets, and that's how uh, she writes about it. We may liken it to an intricate ballet in which the individual dancers 
and ensembles all have distinctive parts, which miraculously reinforce each other and compose an orderly whole. The ballad of the good city sidewalk never repeats itself from place to place, and in any one place is always replete with new improvisations. And then on, it goes on and she goes on and describes the ballad in her own street, and uh, street, Hudson Street, uh, where, where she lived when he wrote this book in New York City, and, and also here, uh, observing but also participating in this uh, ballad. And this produces four pages that, if, I mean, if you have just five minutes, ten minutes uh, for this book, uh, which I think uh, uh, it's a bit uh, little, but still, if you have that, probably these are the four pages you should read both to, to get an idea of how she, she, she would uh, look at cities and uh, you know, what, what kind of literature and also idea that would generate. So I'm not going to read uh, four pages, but I'm going to read how, uh, the, the beginning of that, and, uh, and that's how it, uh, it begins. Uh, the stretch of Hudson Street where I live is each day the scene of an intricate sidewalk ballet. I made my own first entrance into it a little after eight when I put on out the garbage can, can surely a prosaic occupation, but I enjoy my part, my little clank. And this again, this started with some seemingly trivial things and then showing how this actually built up to something quite deep and important is something uh, recurrent in, 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 in the book. And, um, I could find uh, a photographs of uh, uh, Jane Jacobs uh, in front of her house in Hudson Street with her uh, husband and one of her three child, and uh, you know, the garbage can is there. So <laughs> this must be a little bit uh, after eight, and uh, and uh, we are a bit further in the Bible. Actually, what she covers in these four pages is a 24-hour uh, uh, sort of routine or or uh, of of the city in which. Of course, it's not only inhabitants, it's also strangers. It's a mixture of, uh, uh, of, uh, of users and, and uses and their in interactions. This is how uh, Hudson Street looks today. Actually, her house is that little red house uh, on the left. Um, yeah, physically, the building is not uh, a lot uh, that has changed or socially. Uh, uh, or also in, in terms of, of the shops, so of course, a lot has changed. But what you also see here is, is, is quite a lot, a lot of cars uh, kind of occupying the space. And it was something that was already, uh, you know, emerging at, at her time, the New York of the 50s, and uh, of which she was quite critical. Actually, there's an entire uh, chapter in the book dedicated to this issue with the telling title, uh, um, er Erosion of Cities, or attrition of automobiles. And her point, I don't wish to find a way of limit, uh, but there is not, it's not eliminating. I mean, also automobile, automobiles could contribute to that diversity, but you know, this had to be limited, otherwise the very basic function of the city would be eroded because of the way that uh, these uh, automobile uh, uh, cars were occupying urban uh, space. And of course this problem, it's still there, these issues, but of course, we are also in a, in, a, in a further phase where it's not just, uh, uh, this is a picture uh, from the, the so-called Google neighborhood that, uh, that's been developed in Toronto, where, where uh, the, the, the uh, affiliated the company to Google the Alphabet is developing a, a whole neighborhood where it's you know, just sort of, sort of most development of, of a smart city neighborhood, it's not just uh, yeah, machines being there uh, in the way of, uh, of uh, human interaction as in the New York of the 50s, but it's machine claiming the human, human, human eyes, and actually uh, 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 asking uh, uh, the, the attention uh, of, uh, of uh, humans to, 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 uh, to them even interacting with, with themselves, and, uh, and, and again, uh, with not so much an order emerges from those human interactions, but rather uh, uh, a palette, in a way, orchestrated by algorithm uh, with, uh, with uh, quite opaque logics and, uh, and accountabilities. 
So I wonder what what would she uh, think of, of of this of this kind of uh, things from the point of view of, of those uh, those human interactions uh, creating conditions for uh, for for safety. But let's move to the second uh, the second crucial uses of sidewalk, which is again from the combination of this uh, of, of this uh, apparently. Uh, uh, or trivial uses, building up in this case uh, nothing less than social uh, capital, and that's that's how she uh, writes about it. The trust of a city street is formed over time from many many little public sidewalk contacts. It grows out of people stopping by at the bar for a beer, getting advice from the grocer, and giving advice to the newsstand man comparing opinions with other customers at the bakery and nodding hello to the two boys drinking pop on the stoop, eyeing the girls while waiting to be called, called for dinner, admonishing the children, hearing about a job from the hardware man and borrowing a dollar from the druggist, admiring the new babies and sympathizing over the way a coat faded. And you must say, wow, that's, that's kind of trivial. What, what's, what's, what is this? What is the link here with, with something as deep as social uh, capital trust? I mean, she she's aware that that what might, is what the reader uh, might think, but but so she's quite explicit. She says yes, most of it is ostensibly trivial, but the sum is not trivial at all. The sum is a feeling for the public identity of people, a web of public respect and trust and a resource in time of personal or neighborhood need. The absence of distrust is a disaster to a city street. Its cultivation cannot be institutionalized. And that's also a concept coming back uh, and again, that these are things that you know, emerge, are developed in this everyday uh, confrontation, encounters uh, between people. It's not something you can uh, just organize uh, from the outside. And, and uh, uh, because of this, she was uh, quite critical, or, or very good, I would say, of, of, of developments in where, uh, of this year, in where the shopping malls were coming in the place of the myriad of, of small shops. And her point was, in fact, this is wiping out all the opportunities uh, for social contacts that that small shops give. And if you go back to the past, I just read, you see how many uh, you know, small shops owners are part uh, of, this, uh, of this web. And of course, uh, you might think uh, uh, what you might think, or maybe we should uh, try and develop an opinion about the kind of developments where we are new uh, uh, in, where now in, where uh, platforms like this actually don't make it even necessary to be physically present in, in, in a shop whatsoever to have uh, any any uh, physical uh, contact whatsoever with uh, with other other uh, other humans. It makes also wonder what we think at a platform like this that in fact uh, uh, substitute up with substitute the the, the 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 relationship the simple relationship of support between neighbor or neighbors borrowing things to each other, uh, each other doing little favor to each other for a virtue in the world might be much more e efficient, might, might be generate profit, but in fact substitute that building uh, of, of, of trust with a sort of commodified set, or a set of relationships that makes you wonder, okay, what would happen in cases of need uh, when, when this is the kind of relationship you can uh, build, uh, build upon. And then, last but not least, the third, the third key crucial function that sidewalk uh, their use, and because sidewalks are the places where the streets and, and, and the, 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 building, the, the life in buildings behind them comes alive, is what she calls assimilating children which are actually a context for the development of children, the, 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 you know, the emancipation of children. And that's uh, a, a bit uh, from that, and that's uh, uh, how she writes about it. In real life, 
only from the ordinary adults of the city sidewalks do children learn the first fundamental of successful city life. People must take a modicum of public responsibility for each other even if they have no ties to each other. This is a lesson nobody learns by being told. It is learned from the experience of having other people without ties or kinship or close friendship or formal responsibility to you take a modicum of public responsibility to you. And the, the uh, 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 italics are from the text, are in the original. So again, and, and in this uh, chapter she elaborates, these are not things you, you can learn at school. I mean, you learn them by experiencing it day uh, by day. And again, you wonder what, what happens to this kind of, uh, of uh, uh, environment when uh, children are uh, you know, taken uh, by their parents uh, uh, everywhere uh, by, by car, as in, in, in many uh, schools like, uh, like this. Where is that they will can learn this development? I mean, as a question again. Uh, this is for me a really question. But of course, on the other side, and you might also appreciate how uh, being able to live in a city, a country where there are also other possibilities for, uh, uh, for children to, to go around and actually to be much more autonomous, even in a complex environment of the city. What a sort of a, of a good this might be for uh, the, uh, the, uh, the growing up, the emancipation, the simulation of of uh, uh, children. By the way, a scene I, 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 I saw uh, Saturday and I couldn't, uh, when I was uh, uh, going around the city, I could really not resist to uh, make a post up of it. So this, uh, and again, there's a lot of more detail uh, in the book. There are chapters, uh, you know, zooming out from the street to the neighborhood and the district, but, but but here the point is, you know, this, this environment creates the, the condition of very basic essential social functions, safety, uh, social contact, assimilating children. And what makes all that possible is the diversity of users, users uh, of, uh, of assisted, and, and a diversity that's played out, expressed uh, in, the, in, the public, uh, in the public space. So for her, actually, the next step we are moving to the second part of the book is, okay, what are conditions that make this, this possible? Like there, there's a, a, a page where you say, actually, this is the question for any urban planning uh, uh, you know, project, is how to ensure that that diversity is, uh, is, you know, is cultivated. And actually, she identified four conditions and uh, the, the one in, in the underlying uh, chapters, there should be what she calls primary mixed use. So neighbors should also have uses that are not local, that attract people from outside and around which uh, secondary uses, other sort of uses can, can organize, giving a certain identity to a neighbor, making it also an open, an open system to the outside. The second is very physical, small blocks. You, you could see that many possibility to turn in corners, to see something and go uh, and, and for it, or just out of curiosity. So a city with a lot of possibility to, 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 to make, uh, to, to be surprised uh, in a way. Uh, there should be uh, not only new, but also old buildings. And in the context of the New York, the 50s, this is important. This means, in fact, cheap, adaptable buildings, eh, as opposed to expensive and difficult to adapt uh, buildings. I will get back on this because it's an interesting point also for our present context. And there should be a certain concentration, a critical mass of these things. And only, uh, as I will also in the next few parts, uh, pick up one chapter and one uh, citation, I will, uh, and, and, and also with the idea that maybe this is something that you can see or uh, uh, ha has some interesting links with, with debates that we're having now, but it doesn't mean that others might not have them or that you should not read it. But let's, so 
from that point of the that, that, that chapter on the on the need for edge buildings, uh, um, uh, a couple of sentences that, that capture the essence of, of, the, of the argument. As for really new ideas of any kind, no matter how ulti ultimately profitable or otherwise successful, some of them, them might prove to be there is no leeway for such chancy trial, error, and experimentation in the high overhead economy of new construction. And so you see, it's, the point here is the, it's, 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 it's the expensiveness of this space, not so much the federal new alone. So, I mean, if it's old, it's, it's a restored, expensive uh, 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 building in the, in, in the canal area that, that wouldn't account for for a low overall, uh, overhead economy. And, and she uh, adds, conclude, old ideas can sometimes use new buildings. New ideas must use old buildings. Again, okay? so old ideas can sometimes use, you know, expensive buildings, buildings are difficult to adapt, but new ideas need inexpensive buildings, buildings that are easy to adapt. And I think either it's kind of surprising uh, surprise in parallel with the arguments that, uh, uh, among others, the squatter movement has been making for decades in Amsterdam and, and other places, pointing, uh, you know, the kind, the, a kind of situation where, where there is a certain uh, uh, freedom in experimenting with space, in using it, trying out uh, uh, ideas, is crucial uh, for, uh, you know, not just for us that are doing this, but for the city society uh, as, a, as a whole. And for instance, the, the IDM uh, uh, squatters are making that, that point in a very, in a very uh, strong, strong uh, way. Okay, so uh, again, this is one point, there are, there are others, but let's now move to the third chapter, which is more focusing on the process, you know, how how do you know you, which, what are processes with, with cities, neighborhood streets, uh, you know, come up, go down, uh, decline, or uh, regenerate? There are four kind of processes she identifies. One is the so-called self-destruction of diversities. In fact, uh, streets, neighborhoods become victims of their own success. I will get back on that in a while. The second is what she called the curse of border vacuums are, uh, you know, empty areas where there's no diversity do not contribute to that. Think of major infrastructure, but you know, parks can also have that role, no-go access areas and the like. And slamming, and, and slamming is a very interesting chapter where we reanalyze in, uh, the, the process uh, uh, happening in the so-called slums of the United States of the 50s, in where she identifies, uh, you know, the, the you know, factors as old but natural. Uh, and here is very interesting look how she goes in the sort of institutional uh, um, uh, context, the, the financial flows, the regulation, that actually impede the slums to regenerate itself, even when the people inside are full of ideas and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and plans to, to do that. And then uh, there is also another very interesting uh, chapter where she distinguished the, the most positive role of money that comes in, in little bits and, 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 uh, and, and incrementally and big chunk, chunks of money, be it private or public, that are uh, much more uh, uh, destructive. And uh, I, I, I read a piece here from the the first, the first one, and you uh, uh, see you know, why, why I choose uh, this, but it's also very interesting, I think, it's, it's, it's the, this idea of being a victim of, of your own success, I think it's a fascinating one, certainly uh, in the city where we are. So that's what uh, she writes. Because of the location success, which is invariably based on flourishing and magnetic diversity, Ardent competition for space in this locality develops. Whichever one or few uses have emerged as the most profitable in the locality will be repeated and repeated, crowding out and overwhelming less profitable forms of use. But 
the triumph is hollow. A most intricate and successful organism of economic mutual support and social mutual support has been destroyed by the process. In time, a place that was once so, success, so successful and once the object of such ardent competition wanes and becomes marginal. Now, and it's difficult here not to think of the way tourism is taking over Amsterdam and many other cities. Again, you, you do see this process of something being successful, being you know, more uh, uh, competitive than others by wiping out uh, all other functions, uh, economic and non-economic, uh, and again, create a situation where you uh, ask yourself, okay, uh, yes, the triumph is hollow in a process uh, which is all too literally illustrated by the infographic I will show you in a while, and I uh, have to anticipate because then it's kind of uh, 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 bewildering as it is in action, showing the diffusion uh, of, uh, of uh, Airbnb uh, rooms in the city of Amsterdam, we literally see uh, live that process of uh, you know, that, that more competitive use taking over and making you wonder, is this triumph hollow? So this is uh, the diffusion of uh, Airbnb room in Amsterdam from 2008, and, and uh, I like it, I mean, I don't like it, but it is a quite literal uh, um, uh, expression of that process of self-destruction uh, of diversity, uh, raising all sorts of questions about, uh, uh, yeah, what does it mean, what to do about it. Okay, uh, fourth and last part is, uh, okay, what, what, what can we do? And, and I think this, this is one of the part where really, I think uh, many people maybe uh, skip or think it's too technical, but I think uh, it should be read because it's where she shows, um, um, you know, quite a sophisticated understanding how uh, you know, subsidies could be uh, used, subsidies could be used, uh, you know, to, to make, to, to counter negative and, and, and promote po uh, the positive process, again, as I said, it is this chapter on what to do with, with automobiles, which again is sophist quite sophisticated. It's not just banning them, but it's especially limiting them, assuring there are also uh, other ways of uh, moving around using public space. There is a chapter of the limitation and possibility of, of visual order, of, of the design approach to cities, what I abandoned after having read this uh, book. Uh, there is a very interesting chapter, what to do with projects, uh, you know, like the Belmer or, 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 or uh, similar, or in many ways, worse American example, which is also very interesting because she was not for demolition of those places. She was for a, for a change where you, you add diversity, you add the possibility of using buildings in other ways, public space in, in the other way, because you said, well, I mean, what's there is already something to work on. You know, there's already life there. So she was, what then happened, even in the Belmer, of demolishing a building again, hey, that was not what she was, she was proposing. Quite, quite an interesting uh, chapter. It's a chapter of governance, uh, which is uh, also very worthwhile. Uh, but I just want to, 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 to close this part, I mean, uh, it, 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 but also because it's a nice link to, to some reflections I want to do uh, uh, on, on, the, on her method, uh, and also maybe getting closer to, 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 to our work also when it's not directed to city. And it's the, the last chapter where she reflects on the kind of problem a city is. And uh, according to Jane Jacobs, cities happen to be problems in organized complexity, like the life sciences. They present situations in which half a dozen or even several dozen quantities are all varying simultaneously and in subtly interconnected ways. Cities, again, like the life sciences, do not exhibit one problem in organized complexity, which, if understood, explains all. They can be analyzed into many such problems or segments which, as in the case of the life sciences, are also related with one another. The variables are many, but they are not helter-skelter. 
they are interrelated into an organic whole. And, and some of you might, might think, oh yes, this is, makes me think of this recent surge of this idea of the new science of, of cities, they are located by book, like, books like, like, like this one, which are heavy on you know, mathematical modeling uh, uh, of, uh, of the complexity of the cities, but actually what shared in mind is quite, quite uh, fundamentally different, and it's quite beautiful as I'm concerned, uh, uh, made clear even before the book, the book begins. There's, there, are hardly, there are no pictures actually in the book, just a few diagrams in the chapter on small blocks, and in uh, the page where you usually have the list of figures, she said, okay, there are no figures in this book, and then she goes on uh, saying, uh, the scenes that illustrate this book are all about us. For illustrations, please look closely at real cities. While you are looking, you might as well also listen, linger, and think about what you see. So that, that's, that's what she was thinking. That, that's, that's the method. So in a way, it's much closer to, 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 to books like this, uh, that, that, that start really for the observation of what happens in public space, but it also a fundamental difference because she never stopped at that visible, but she also asked, okay, well, what's behind it? And again, that asking could let, uh, lead her into organizational structures, legal regulation, f financial flows. So it's not just the visible. There you start, and then you ask, okay, but well, what's, what's, what's uh, behind it? Now, and later on, she sums up uh, her, her, her methodological approach, we call it, uh, she would never use that word, but that's what we might use, and that's the synthesis. In the case of understanding cities, I think the most important habits of thoughts are this. First, to think about processes. Second, to work inductively, reasoning from particulars to the general rather than the reverse. And three, to seek for an average clues involving very small quantities which reveal the way larger and more average quantities are operating. And this last, I, 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 it, it, to me, is really fascinating. So she was, of course, your know, statistics help, data help, numbers. But if you really, the point was, if you really want to understand how things work, you should go to outliers, to think, to, to phenomena not working like the average, because they will give you clues of how the uh, average works. And they, then you need to, to, to dig in and, 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 and use that knowledge to also understand, uh, understand uh, uh, the rest. And, and uh, moving from the research method to the planning method, in fact, she, she, her key criticism of planning is not just that they're doing uh, wrong, wrong things or, 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 or doing things that, that destroy that diversity of life, but they, they lack uh, a method that is based on this, this way of looking, engaging uh, with, with, with cities. And that's how she sums it up. The practitioners and teachers of city planning have ignored the study of success and failure in real life, have been incurious about the reasons of unexpected success, and are guided instead by principle derived from the behavior and appearance of towns, suburbs, tuberculosis, sanatory affairs, and imaginary dream, dream cities, anything but cities themselves. So that, that, that's, that's the, the, the key problem also beyond the particular conclusion that planners deny. This is critical, very different kind of planners, but the point is they don't start by looking at to understand how things work. They start from abstract principles of some sort. And of course, what she has been often contrasted uh, to as the, the antithesis of the approach, planning our, 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 our uh, architects like like Le Corbusier, who did indeed start from abstract principle and then derive from there uh, what uh, to do in cities. Uh, and of course, this type of planners we also have had in, um, in, in Amsterdam, uh, Jacoba Mulder and, and, and Korfa Estre, of course, were also planners of that sort and, uh, and uh, 
behind the design of neighborhoods like US, which again, we should be open and see, okay, what, what do we think of that? Maybe we are not that, uh, that critical, but that's definitely not what uh, would have been, been her, uh, her, uh, her approach. And her approach to planning, but actually also to policy making in general, I think that chapter of governance is really interesting also for people dealing with policy in general beyond uh, cities or, uh, and any other issues. What she says is what we should do is we must experiment with methods for solving big common problems without, as a corollary, wrecking gratuitous mayhem or localities and on the processes of self-government. So that's the point. Of course, we should try new things, we should experiment. But again, being cautious that we destroy the process more than we create, and, and, and especially that we don't frustrate processes that are going on there, you know, that are uh, uh, emerging in those, uh, in those localities. But interestingly, what she also say in the part of the book where she comes with her own suggestion is, you should use on me the same, criti the same uh, critical approach that I use on others. I mean, my ideas you should also test, see whether they work or, or not. So again, it's, it's beyond the, 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 the individual suggestion and more about a method uh, which is, uh, you know, one of experiment, but of, of, of of cautiousness and respect for what is already there. So in a way, it's, it's much more closer to, to an approach to knowledge and, and policy that you find in a book like, like uh, this one by James Scott. In which way one of the chapters, it's, it's totally dedicated to the contraposition of Le Corbusier and Jane Jacobs uh, as a way of dealing with, uh, uh, with cities and of course his uh, quite uh, strongly on the side of Jane Jacobs. Okay, I want to close with a little, ref uh, uh, just a little reflection on the, on what's behind this, that's probably one of the most influential book in, the, in, the, in, in, in our field, and also outside of our field. So this is the CV that she would uh, have showed you at the moment uh, uh, she published her book, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, I doubt she would have been uh, hired by any of our uh, uh, scholarly institutions. So that, that, that's what it should look like. She had a you know, high school, was, was not a particularly uh, you know, successful student in terms of grades. She was a bit too an independent uh, thinker. She got bored if things were not that uh, challenging. Uh, she then, instead of going to college, learned stenography because she wanted some practical skills to start, you know, living in the world. Uh, later on, in New York, she started following courses at Columbia and uh, with, with a bewildering variety, a lot of biology, but also uh, law, um, actually social sciences, basically everything. But at one point, she was very good, actually, very good marks, also uh, enormous amount of work, but she was basically kicked out because she had no direction, you know, that you, you, you cannot do anything with you. You are going too many different ways. And what was, remember, there was a very uh, skeptical, clear approach of the, the whole institute, I must say, of, uh, of academia. Now, if you look at, uh, at work, it's, it's also uh, an interesting development with, with uh, again, at the beginning, uh, secretarial work. I mean, she was smart, so she got towards some more management, uh, small man uh, 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 junior management roles. Uh, then she had, a, you know, the, her, her, she always thought of herself as a, as a writer, and in the end she got some, some, uh, some, uh, some work at that, first as a freelance, and then she started to work for different, for different, uh, for different uh, magazines, including uh, quite importantly, Architectural Forum, where we started really also doing some, some, some research, publishing work uh, on cities. And, and what allowed her to, uh, to write the book was a, as a grant. Uh, in fact, sort of a sabbatical from a year that then uh, was extended later a little bit by the Rockefeller Foundation. And uh, now, if you've done other, that's what also interesting, I, I didn't know about this before I read the biography, that while at, 
uh, uh, Colombia just after she actually wrote a book on the on the uh, interesting on the rejected suggestion of the constitutional convention. So ideas that were not taken on in the in the constitution, the American constitution. Apparently, was it so good? It was published by Columbia University Press, but you know, an odd book on uh, on law. Maybe not that odd. Uh, the last point uh, is also uh, an, an important one because actually. Uh, uh, as an activist, she was probably uh, as good, at least as a uh, uh, as a writer, as a, as, a, as, a, as a thinker. But it was interesting. She never one. She really was really aware of that's a very different thing. You know, when you know all that method, that cautiousness, seeing nuances, observing things, listening. When you are an activist, is different. There you are in a war which is black and white. You have to fight your battles. Uh, so th th that's one. Second, she always told herself, I'm a writer, but sometimes you have to become an activist be be because of existential threats. She saw, I mean, the narrowing of sidewalks or the risk of neighbors being wiped out, and we often neighbors where she was active, as existential threats. And when that happens, you have to let things go. Actually, one of these battles happened in the middle of her writing, the death and life, and actually, made the whole project a risk, was on the reason that she had to ask for an extension. I, I just want to, uh, you know, you could have a whole lecture on, on, on this, but uh, I just to mention one battle, actually it was a few years uh, after the publication of The Death of Life, and where she successfully led an, uh, an, an action against uh, the, the, the building of, uh, of a highway system that would have cut across uh, uh, Manhattan, and actually the, the, the man, I mean, Brian Ray, decided behind this was the Robert Moses, that for decades, the mastermind against, uh, behind uh, big projects in the, in the city, and that actually was one of the few times that they also actually came in, uh, you know, in, in, in physical encounter, confrontation with each other, it happened a lot of times, and, and uh, 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 there is a famous uh, quote she made because she could really, he could really not, not get this. He could really not, or not just losing a battle, he could not understand how something so obviously right was not going to go through. And he uh, uh, apparently, uh, uh, that was, uh, that, that's what he said. There is nobody against this, nobody, nobody, nobody but a bunch, a bunch of mothers. And for him, this was really unbelievable. And yes, she uh, used to cycle to work, which was actually quite an odd thing to do in the New York of the 50s. Thank you very much.